Earl Galant, Township Chevrolet, shop foreman here for another edition of uh, Tech Talk. Um, today we're just going to go over right quick. It's winter time, obviously we get storms and our weather's been real crazy over the past little bit here. So just some tips and uh, some information about uh, you know that initial start after a big storm or just some some uh, things you can do to help prevent some issues uh, happening to you in the future when, when you get a storm. So. One thing we get a lot of people coming in here, and I know a lot of their shops do, is after a snowstorm, you've done your, um, you started your car, you let it warm up, well, you finish shoveling the driveway, or you're getting ready to go out, or you get to move in your apartment for the plow to come through. Um, you see, a, you know, a line or, or a bunch of drops of bright green or bright yellow uh, fluid on the ground or something underneath your car that looks like antifreeze, and that's usually what people associate it with. They'll come in and say, "Listen, I started my car this morning. I think I got an antifreeze leak. We bring it in, we check it." can't find a leak anywhere um, and normally what the cause of that is uh, they put zinc in a lot of the exhaust systems today uh, it's to help keep the pipe from rusting it's a rust inhibitor and when it gets hot it crystallizes uh, and then of course from the salt and the water and the snow when it gets hot it runs off the exhaust and when it does it gathers these zinc crystals and hits this bright white snow and it kind of looks uh, green or or really bright yellow and you usually can tell it's not any freezing because you'll have a line of it traveling in the direction of your exhaust so if you see that that's what that is it's not a big deal it's nothing to panic over obviously if you've got overheating issues or you've got uh, a warning light coming on saying that your overflow bottle is empty or there's antifreeze problem or coolant system problem that's another story altogether but if you see those little drops nothing else associated with it that's most likely uh, what's going on there so we've got Let's say we've gotten a storm, you're going out, you're getting ready to clean your car off, of course, headlights, taillights, uh, cleaning all that stuff off is real important. Especially nowadays, a lot of the headlight bulbs and signal light bulbs and, and, um, and taillight bulbs are all LED. LEDs tend not to produce as much heat as the old incandescent bulbs, so they don't seem to melt themselves off as well. So um, before, a quick little brush and a little bit of remnants of snow in there, if you drove after a little while, you, you know, it would melt itself off. But it doesn't want to do that anymore because of the temperature. So um, another thing to keep in mind too is uh, when you go to start your car, you should always open the hood. The car, front end of the car is designed so that it's taking fresh air in. Well, when the car's not moving and there's wind blowing at it, the fresh air is going to roll up underneath behind the grill and the bumper in around where your fan area is. You get a bunch of snow in there all around your engine. You start your car, you move it, you pull it back in. That snow is now melted a bit. You go back in the house, now it freezes up and some components of your vehicle could be frozen which is hard on them obviously, especially your fan. Your fan's gonna have to be packed full of snow or potentially could be. And you go to start your car, it's idling out there and you're doing some shoveling or you're waiting for it to warm up on your auto start. Fan goes to turn on and it can't and now you've got an overheating issue. You could potentially blow a fuse for your fan, overheat the engine, or you can actually ruin your fan motor. Sometimes it'll, the amperage draw enough before the fuse will blow, uh, especially an older fan will actually burn the fan out and those fan modules can be, assemblies can be pretty expensive. So that's another thing to kind of keep in mind. Uh, another common problem too after, especially with our temperature fluctuating like it has been over the last little while, uh, temperature changes where we get a, you know, a lot of snow, it melts and it freezes again. Now you've got ice around your door rubbers, ice in your door locks, ice on your window rubbers. You go through the drive through and you're pressing that button repeatedly trying to get that window down and you know finally it breaks free and you get your order. But what you're doing is you're, you're taking life out of your motor and you're potentially damaging those seals and gaskets and stuff. Um, one thing to help prevent that is a silicone based spray. Uh, we do put that on here. Um, it's something that only takes a couple minutes. You put that stuff on when it's dry and it helps the, helps the ice and, and stuff from sticking to that so your windows will move a lot freer. So when you're coming on to winter time, you're coming in for an oil change or something or any other service and you want your windows uh, or your door rubber sprayed, it's a good thing to ask. It could save you some money down the road, could save you some wind noise issues. Um, key lock, same thing. Uh, a lot of people now have key fobs. A lot of cars don't even have a keyhole to use, but some of the cars that still have keyholes, you're using your key fob all the time to unlock and lock your doors. Um, you do that, and now you've got a key that's sitting there not moving. Could be two, three years before you ever need your key, and you come out to your car and you get a dead battery or something, and you go to hit your key fob and there's nothing, or the key fob battery itself is bad. Now you need to take your key out and actually put it in the car and, and unlock it. Or same thing as a trunk, you always use your trunk button but you got a trunk keyhole there. You've never used it before. Well, in our climate, of course, it's gonna rust, it's gonna seize up, and you go to put your, your key in your trunk and you can't get in. Uh, or you go to get in your car and the key fob doesn't work and you can't get in there. So, good idea just to spray some lubricant in there. Um, anything at all, like rust check. Uh, there is some 
graphite for locks that'll help keep that stuff lubed up so just something else to mention when you come in the garage and you're like you know coming on winter time maybe like to get my uh, my hinges and my door rubbers and seals and my door locks all lubricated for the winter to keep all the the uh, salt and the ice and corrosion that's probably a good idea so anyway a few quick tips there uh, over the winter time the Atlantic Can Canada here to keep your car running good and keep yourself from having issues that's been another addition to Tech Talk and uh, can't wait to do business with you thanks